Are you looking for YouTube tutorials to teach you how to make a game in Stentor? Well, I think we can make one today. Now, in all these months of lockdown, and now that the summer holidays are on, I thought it would be a nice time to make a tutorial about how to make a complete game in Stentor. Got a comment about a nine-year-old viewer who's been watching my videos to learn programming, and I took that as inspiration to make a complete game and then to make a tutorial about how to make a complete game. So let's get started. Now I was inspired by that nine-year-old viewer to actually make a complete game and then really chronicle the entire making of that game in a YouTube video. So a couple of things out of the way to begin with. This game is not the best game you'll ever see. It's not uh, A-list Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed style of game. It's a really simple endless scroller where you just shoot some baddies, they shoot back at you and you try not to die. And then at the end of the game, it tells you what your score is. So in that way, it's more like Flappy Bird than it is Grand Theft Auto. And secondly, all the artwork that you see here, I created in PiscalApp.com. And up front, I'm not a great artist. So it's not the best looking graphics you'll ever see in a game. Thirdly, this video might be quite long because I'm going to attempt to go from the very beginning to the very end of making a game. But don't worry, I'll time code the video in the description so you can skip forward to relevant parts so you don't have to sit there watching hours of me talking about how to make a game. So let's get into the game itself. Five actors, one goodie, that's the blue ship, baddies, which is the red ship over here, two different types of laser depending on who's shooting it, and one explosion for when something is hit by a laser. I've got a really bad background where I try to make some stars scroll. It really doesn't work, but I'm not going to talk about that this video. I've got some fonts that we're going to mention at the end. I've got three levels. Our main level, which is what we play in, and then a start screen and an end screen. And some sounds as well, and a theme tune that I wrote myself, which I'm quite proud of because it sounds really like something that you would see in a computer game in the 80s. So to begin the game, let's start with the action, which is us controlling the ship. When you open the ship, you can see I've got my animations there. So let's immediately begin by controlling the ship's backward, forward, and side to side motion. Let's grab a when creating. So when the game starts, we are going to set up our attributes because we need a couple of them. Well, three to be exact. Let's create one attribute, which is called thrust. It's a number attribute. We're going to create an attribute that's called side movement. That's going to be our left and right. Again, it's a number. And lastly, we are going to create a direction. That's going to take care of the tilt of the ship. Let's get our attributes all set to zero when the game starts. Because we want no movement, we want no up and down, and we want no turning whatsoever. Let's rename that attribute to set attributes is it always helps to name our events for when something goes wrong let's put a when updating that's an always and what we're going to take care of is the thrust now the thrust is our forward and backward motion now i've done this a few times in videos before so i'm going to go fast and you'll see a link up on the screen for the videos where i talk about character movement but as i said we're going to go through this a little bit quicker than normal because we've got a lot to do in this game so let us set the X speed, in this case, the Y speed, the up and down speed, to be exactly what the value of thrust is. At the moment, thrust is zero, so our ship is not going anywhere. Let's put in two ifs because we want to take care of the forward and backward motion. So what we're going to do is we can either go here to user input and drag in a control like this, or we can go to the space, click on it, go to user input and press control. We're going to choose an up button, and we're going to choose a down button. Let's put that in there. Now, when we press up, we would like the speed of our ship to go up. So what we'll do is we'll say set thrust. And because it's an up movement in stencil, it has to be a minus number. So we say set thrust to thrust minus. And in this case, I'm going to put a value of 0. Two. Sounds, sounds like it's really not that much, but I promise you for this game, it's quite enough. And in the attributes, 
Let's go back to set thrust to thrust plus, because we're going downwards, minus, excuse me, plus 0 0.1. So when you press the up, we'll go up. When we go down, we'll go down. Let us immediately put in my favorite bit of code to our slowdown factor. So what we're going to do is slow our ship down simply by taking whatever the value of thrust is and multiplying it by less than zero. In this case, I'm going to do 0 0.99 because that works really well in a space game. Let's just quickly test that out. So that should be our up and down movement sorted out really quite quickly. Let's have a look. Here we've got our up. Here we've got our down. And that's working exactly as I wanted it to. Kind of floaty. When you let go, it slows down slowly. When you go back, it's not so fast. That's really, really well done. Let's very quickly put some animations in here. Let's just quickly check out animations. We've got left, right, static, and thrust. All lowercase, no capital letters at all. So let's go to actors and draw. When you press the up button, let's switch the animation to thrust. When you push down, let's change the animation to static. And why don't we put in an otherwise if to finish off this set of blocks. Otherwise, if, and what we'll do is we'll put in a or block. So what we're now checking for is have we released the up or the down button? So let's do it like this. If up is released or down is released, why don't we change the animation to static again? And that way... Once you've let go of any of the buttons, the ship will just revert to that static, the still image, and it will look like the ship's not thrusting. Now, I know backwards there is no thrust animation, but in the future I might add a back thrust, like a reverse thrust animation, and then I'm kind of taken care of. So that's our forward and backward motion done really nicely. That feels just perfect. Let's add our side movement now. Again, let's do a when updating... Let's rename that immediately to side movement, like that. Now we're going to just mimic everything that was set here, over here. So we're going to do virtually the same, but this time we're going to be talking about the X speed. So we'll set the X speed in the attributes. Let's grab a side movement. So set the X speed to whatever side movement is, and it's at the moment zero. We're going to put in our two ifs, and our otherwise if. Now I'm going to go really fast because I'm just repeating what I've done before. If left is pressed, if right is pressed, and check if we've released both the left or the right key. So we'll do that really fast. And what we'll do is set the side movement to something, set the side movement to something, and grab our getters. Now, left, look, we haven't done the controls. Let's do the controls. So if you press left, if you press right, if you let go of left, and if you let go of right. So we've taken care of all of our key presses now. So let's do, if you press left, we need to minus, because it's a left-hand movement. So we'll do left-hand movement. And what shall we do? Let's go for one, minus one. Let's do a plus here because it's a right-handed movement. So that's side movement plus one going to the right. And why don't we do the animations while we're here? Switch the animation to left. Switch the animation to right. And lastly, switch the animation to static. Let's see if that works. Now, those of you who are a little bit sharper will notice i didn't put a slowdown factor i just forgot before i pressed test game it's all right we'll grab it on the way back well that's working the animation's working but my goodness that is way too fast let's fix that right now one did not feel good at all let's go for zero point what should we do zero point four let's do zero point four let's put in our slowdown factor because that makes the movement 
feel better as well. So set side movement to, let's go for our times. And as always, multiply by something less than one. And it always makes the value go towards zero. So we're always wanting our thrust, our side movements, and all of our other movement attributes to go back to zero. Now that feels kind of cool. So let's just have a look. So we've got all of our animations working, the thrust working. If I go, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it's working really well. I love the slowdown factor. It feels very spacey, very, very floaty. I like that. Now, one thing that's missing, and that's something that I really like from retro games, because I used to play a lot of games in the 80s, I loved the attention to detail. Now, this ship, although the animations are pretty cool, it's looking a little bit stiff, because when you do that left and right turn like this, the ship just kind of looks like it's moving along the floor. It doesn't look like it's flying in space just yet. So for that reason, what we did was make this direction attribute. And what we're going to do is just tilt our ship a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. And that's done really, really simply. So let's go back to actors and position. And what we'll do is we'll say point. Now, remember, we're doing always point self. So point the ship towards the direction. Now, direction starts off as zero. So our ship will be pointed upwards. When you press the left and when you press the right, we're going to tilt our ship slightly to the left and slightly to the right. So let's just do that now. So when you press left, let's set direction. I'm going to put it just underneath the side movement there. So what we're going to do is left should be minus because we're going into minus degrees. So what we'll do is we'll say, set the direction to direction minus 0 0.3. We'll check that out and see if it works. And let's do a plus here and put in a direction and we'll do plus 0 0.3 here. And as always, we have to put our slowdown factor. Always never forget that guys, you have to slow things down to give it that really cool floating kind of slowing down. In physics, it's called inertia. So when things slow down and you can give it more or less inertia by changing that number over there. So let's get our direction and set that back 0 0.98. So that is also going to go back to zero. So what should happen now is the ship should tilt slightly to the left and slightly to the right when we're moving it and then kind of correct itself back to zero. And you can see it's working really well there. So we can go forward like this. We can go to the sides. We can come back as well like this. And it looks really, really cool. So I'm really happy with that. I think that's just fantastic. Okay, now we've done the ship. Let's deal with the baddies. Now the baddies themselves have three animations. That's a red, green, and a pink or purple, depending on how good your screen is. Eventually, what we want is our baddies to just appear at the top of the screen and fly down and kind of not really, you know, care about anything. They just fly in a straight line downwards. Obviously, it'd be more interesting in our game if they flew around, but we're not going to deal with that in this particular video. Now, this game is going to rely on our level. That's level one doing a lot of work for us. When I created this level, I actually put one ship. That's the good ship on the screen and I left it there. And we've done a lot of programming in the ship. The rest of the programming, practically, including all the hits, all the explosions and all the movement are going to be taken care of in the level events. And it's really important that you remember that you can put events in levels and actually create actors and create all this, you know, game movement just in your level. You don't have to put all the events into the actors. Let's do a really simple one where we say when this level is created, we will create an actor. That's an actor type. Let's choose which actor type. It's a baddie. And let's put it at X400. That should be center of the screen. And let's put it at five, which is right at the top of the screen. Let's run this game. 
And there you go. So obviously the ship isn't moving because we haven't told it to, but it's there and it was created by the level. So we didn't manually put that baddie on the screen, which is really cool, by the way. Let's go back. Now that we've created the baddie, we need the baddie to move. The best way to do that, in my opinion, is to go to the baddie, go to the events, set up a when created, and call this move movement, like that. So whenever a baddie is created, what we're going to say to it is set your Y speed, that's your up and down speed, to 10. And that's it. We don't really have to do anything else. Well, not yet anyway. So when the baddie is created at the top of the screen, it will just come down because we've told it to. So whenever a baddie is created, just move down. And there we go. Now we've got a cool game of pinball here because we haven't really done anything with our collisions. But if I just refresh that, you'll see that a baddie's created and it just flies straight down. And it just leaves the screen. Really good to note. If you're creating actors that appear on the screen and then go off the screen, and if you're going to create hundreds or thousands of actors that do this, get used to killing that actor when they leave the screen. And that's it. So just kill self after leaving screen. And that way your CPU won't fry as it's trying to calculate all the thousands of baddies that it's created and where are they and what position they're in. Just kill them when they get off the screen. So we've created the baddie. It goes at the top, it comes down, and then once it leaves the screen, it's killed. Something that we have to think about is how boring this game is so far. The baddie's created at the top and it just flies down in a straight line. And I'm not happy with this positioning over here like this. So what we'll do is go to numbers and takes and grab a random integer. Now an integer, for those of you who don't know what that word means, it means a whole number. So one, two, three, four, rather than 1.5 or 2.3. So there's no decimals allowed. So what we'll do is a random integer between, let's go between 10 and 790. So remember, I've put that in the X. And what that means is, Find a position anywhere from 10, which is all the way on the left, to 790, which is all the way on the right. Choose a random place, and then y equals 5, which means it's the top of the screen. So when this baddie is created, it's going to be randomly anywhere from the left to right. Now, while we're here, why don't we also grab a time and do this every, how many seconds should we do? Well, why don't we do a random? seeing as we're already using them. So a random integer between, what should we say, every one, two, three seconds. So between one and three seconds, let's create a baddie, randomly put it somewhere on the x-axis, all the way at the top at five. And then the baddie itself says, well, whenever you create one of me, I'm just going to move down the screen. So in that really small amount of script, we should now be able to have endless baddies coming at us from random places kind of attacking us. So let's have a look. There's one. There they are, look. They seem to be on the left-hand side. Let's, oh, no, no, no. It's, that's, that's the thing about random. Random can mean that they're quite similar as well. So let's see. These baddies are all over the place. Oh, there's one off the screen there, so we might have to take care of that. But okay, I'm quite happy with that. Let me refresh that and see if there's any difference in the way they come. There's one on the left. Okay, so yeah, random really does mean random. They'll come from anywhere they want to. Now, while we're here, why don't we take care of the costume of the baddies? As we know, there are three versions of baddies. There are the red, the green, and the pink. They're numbered one, two, and three. So what we should be able to do is as the baddie is created, why don't we change the costume or the animation for that baddie? And the way to do that, again, our favorite thing, random integer. So switch animation to anything between one and three. So when the animation switches, it's either going to be a one, a two, or a three, which means any one of those animations is now allowed to appear. Let's see if that actually works. Let's have a look. So there's our red, there's a green, there's a pink, another pink. And there we go. We've now got randomness. They're coming at different positions. They're coming in different colors. And this is pretty cool. Of course, the game doesn't work yet because, as I said, I've just created a really cool pinball rather than a space 
shooting game. We're going to have to take care of that in a second, but let's not worry about that right now. So what else do we need to do? Let's move to shooting. Now, shooting for our main character, our ship, is going to be important because we control the shooting with the space bar. So let's add a, when updating, and call it shooting. I'll do it all lowercase because that's what I've been doing up until now. So what we're going to do with our shooting is really simple. We're going to add in a if, we're going to put in a user input of the space bar, like that. When the space bar is pressed, we are going to create an actor, which is going to be a laser at, now we need to find where to create this laser from. So we'll put it at the X of self, and the Y of self. So wherever the ship is, that laser will be created wherever the ship is. Now, while we're here, let's really quickly work on the movement of the, the laser. So what we're going to do is when created, so this is called fire laser, or actually let's call it laser movement, just so we're not confused later on. Let's grab the y speed of this and put it at minus 40. I think minus 40 should be fast enough. So that's going to fire quite fast upwards. Let's have a look at our ship. So when the space is pressed, create a laser there. And the laser itself says, whenever you create one of me, I'm just going to shoot myself straight up the screen. Okay, let's have a look at that one. Let's have a look. Now, although that looks really cool, as a pattern, we know that's not really going to, that's really not going to work, is it? So each spacebar is producing at least 10 to 15 lasers. Right, how do we fix that? Well, we're going to have to go back to our attributes here. We're going to have to create a new one. This one is going to be a Boolean, and we'll call this firing. So now what we have to do is figure out when we press the space bar, you fired a bullet and we're going to have to put a time delay before a bullet is produced again. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to our set attributes and let's make sure we set firing to true. So we want to be able to shoot from the minute the game starts or the second the game starts. And what we're going to have to do is replace the if the space is down and we are going to need an and block. Because now we have to check for two things. Is the space bar being pressed? And, and, is firing set to true? If it is, let me just do that before I speak. If you press the space and firing is true, then create a laser at this position. The laser itself will just fire upwards because we've told it whenever you're created, just shoot yourself upwards. And then what we need to do is set our attribute, the firing, to false as soon as we've shot a bullet. So what we'll do is we'll say set firing to false. So shoot if it's true, shoot one bullet, and then immediately set firing to false. Now you're not allowed to shoot because it has to be true. And what we'll do is add a time delay. So after, I think 0 0.5 seconds should be enough. And then we reset firing back to true so that you can fire again. So that's a really cool on and off switch. So fire, set it to false. Half a second later, you can shoot again. It's immediately set to false. And that works really well. And in my previous videos, you might have remembered that we did that with jumps as well to check if you're jumping or not. And there you go. I, I think 0 0.5 is a bit slow. Might change it to 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. We'll do that later once we've started, you know, killing baddies. So that's working pretty well. Now, one thing I forgot was when we shoot the laser or when the laser moved, we should also follow our same advice. We should kill that laser once it leaves the screen because that's really important that, again, any actors that are generated on the screen, once they leave the screen, they shouldn't be taking up any of the computer's memory or CPU in trying to work out what to do with them. So let's kill the lasers once they leave the screen. So we've got the lasers working. We've got the baddies working got the ship moving really well. 
Now let's fire lasers from the baddie, which are going to be coming towards our ship, downwards. Let's do that now, really simply. In the same part where we already have the baddie movement, why not just put our laser creation there? So let's do that now. Let's do a time factor of every... Let's randomize that, seeing as we're on a roll with randoms. Let's do that between, yeah, one and three seconds. That seems to be a good time delay there. So between one and three seconds, create an actor type, which is going to be a bad laser at the X of self and the Y of self. So that's the X of self and Y of self like that. Let's very quickly go to the bad laser and put in a movement of the laser itself. So whenever a bad laser is created, let's set the Y speed down and up speed to, let's do 30. Remember positive is downwards in stencil when you're talking about the Y axis. So whenever a, a bad laser is created, it's going to move downwards. Let's go to our baddie and see if everything here is working. So between one and three seconds, create a bad laser at the X of self and Y of self. And then the bad laser says, well, when you create me, I'm going to go down. Let's follow our own advice and kill that thing once it leaves the screen. And let's test this all out. So if everything's working well, our ship's moving, our ship's firing lasers, the baddies are being created coming down the screen and firing lasers at us. Let's have a look. Yep, they are. They kind of, there's a, yeah, there's a bit of a delay. Oh, I'm quite happy with that because they are, they're firing. Some of them fire early, some of them fire late. So you, you're given a chance to, you know, shoot at the aliens. I think we might have to work on the delay of how long it takes the baddies to shoot at you. But we need to play the game a few more times to see if there's any problems or whether... Yeah, we might adjust the time of the bad lasers, but let's not worry about that. Oh, I just noticed that my ship just left the screen and didn't come back. Now, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? So if our ship goes off the screen, you're not allowed to come back. Let's go and fix that right now. Let's close some of these down. It's getting a bit cluttered up here. Let's go to our ship. We've got everything sorted out. Let's now create a situation. So this will be the... Uh, leaving the screen script. We've got to make sure that when our actor goes off the screen, they actually come back on the screen. And an old retro way of doing that is the wraparound movement. So if you go to the right, you come on the left. If you go up, you come from the bottom. And it works really well. So we're going to need for this four ifs. Let's take a tiny bit of time, but it won't take too long. And we're going to do a less than, more than, less than more than so we need to check each side of the screen let's go to actor and position so if the x of actor here and if the y of actor so we're checking if the left and the right of the actor or the up and down of the actor are at a certain position we need the actor to switch back to the other side of the screen so i'll explain that now our screen is 800 by 600 800 across 600 top to bottom so if the X of self, if the X of self is more than 790, set the X position of our actor to 10. And we'll do the reverse. If it's less than 10, set the X position of our actor to 790. If the Y of our actor is more than, I think that'll be 590, set it to 10. Make sure we've got the Y position there. And set the Y position, if it's less than 10, back to 590. Now, once we put that in, we should now have a ship that can go left, right, up or down, and just wrap around to the other side of the screen. Let's have a look. So here's our ship, jumps off the left and the right. If you go down, it's a risky move in a space game to go down. 
like that. And it works really well. And in that way, you can kind of get yourself out of a sticky situation. If you're being fired on, you can jump from one side of the screen to the other. You can kind of, you know, disappear. Cool. So it's all working there. Now we have to talk about collisions. And collisions in a game are what make a game actually playable. Because you want things to shoot other things. You want to avoid bullets because you don't want to get shot. So collisions are actually what make a game playable. Now, in this game, we're going to need, by my counting, four separate collisions. So we are going to need, if I just run this game again, we are going to need four things colliding with each other. Well, one is optional. So let me tell you while the game is being played. We want to be able to shoot a baddie. So when I fire, I want my laser to kill the baddie. So that's collision number one. Also, when the baddie laser hits me, I want the ship to die. So that's collision number two. And thirdly, I want the ships to be able to collide with each other and cause something to die as well. So there's our three collisions. Now the fourth one, which is optional, is when I shoot and the bad laser is coming down. We could have it so that the two lasers cancel each other out, but I won't worry about that and we'll work out if we need it or not. So let's work on at least the first three collisions we talked about. Now let's do our ship dying, which is either from a bad laser or from colliding with a ship. So let's do that now. We are going to go to the ship. We're going to set up an attribute here, which is going to be a collision. Let's do a type and a type. And what we'll do is we'll choose our actor type of ship. And we'll choose an actor type of, let's do baddie. So let's just do a baddie collision. And what we'll do really simply is this. We'll simply say kill both actors. That's actor one and actor two. So first and second actor. We'll just kill them like this. And then what we'll do also is create an explosion on the screen. So we'll create an actor type. And we'll actually use our separate, that's our actual separate, explosion. Now, although we have an explode animation inside the ship animations, or should I say one of the animations of our ship actor is an explode, I actually created a separate explosion animation. It's just the same animation. I just imported it as a separate actor. I have found that when you're trying to do an explosion and kill an actor at the same time, it causes weird delay problems. So it's better to just kill your actor and replace it with an explosion animation. It works faster and it works way more smooth. So let's go to our ship's events. And we are going to create the explosion actor or the animation, if you will. The explosion actor is going to appear at the X of actor. That's X of self because we're in the ship. And the Y of self like that. Now let's run that because we are going to have a bit of a problem, but we can solve that really quite quickly. So remember, this is only when the ship hits a baddie, not a bad laser, but a baddie. And there we have it. Now what we need to do is put this as the first one because we want to create the explosion at the X and Y before we kill it, because if we kill it, before we put the explosion in its place, there's no way for it to go. Now let's check this out. And now remember this, this collision will only work between a ship and a baddie. So I'm not yet accounting for being shot by a laser. So you can see what happens here when the ships collide like this, both are killed, but the explosion animation takes the place of where my ship was. Now you can see on the screen here, we've got the last parts of the explosion. They're just staying on the screen. Now there's a reason for that. Let's very quickly go to the explosion. I took looping off this animation because when it's looping, it will just continue in a cycle. I thought one explosion was enough. So I took looping off. But of course, the last frame of the animation is there and it has to also be taken off the screen. So what we can do really simply here is go to the events. Add a when creating event, and we're going to call this remove explosion. 
So as soon as an explosion is created, what we want to do is with a bit of time delay, let's do a, I think 0 0.6 seconds might work for this. We are going to kill the explosion. So whenever an explosion happens on the screen, 0 0.6 seconds later, it's going to remove itself from the screen as well. So let's have a look if this works. Let's do a collision. And there you go. That's, I think, as perfect as we're going to get it. So as soon as the ship hits, you get one full animation loop, and then it's off the screen. So that works perfectly. Let's not worry about that anymore. Get rid of explosion. Let's go to our ship. I'm going to move this down and, of course, rename it. So this is called Ship Hitting Baddie. Now let's do the same thing and this time account for when the ship is hit by a bad laser. So let's grab a collision type and type. Let's do the actor type of ship being hit by a bad laser this time. Again, let's kill both actors. That's first and second actor, because of course both have to leave the screen. And finally, the same thing, create the explosion and again, account for where that explosion is going to be. So that's the X and the Y of self. Remembering, we've already now put that animation killing itself after 0 0.6 seconds. So we don't have to do that again. Let's rename this one. So this is bad laser hitting ship. Maybe I should do it in the same formation I did it above. So that should work. Okay, let's check this out. So now this game is getting a bit more serious. I can't hit an enemy ship. And I also now can't get shot by an enemy ship. So let's have a look. So remembering I can't shoot them yet, but I can get shot. So let's get myself shot. And there you go. So we now have a game where the stakes are much higher. I can't hit a ship and I can't get shot by a bad laser either. And it makes this game a little bit more stressful. And that's kind of cool. So now what we have to do is actually give me a point to play in this game, which is killing the bad ships or the baddies. So let's do that now. Now you may have noticed that we put both collisions for the ship inside the ship. That's okay, because if you remember, we started the level with an actual ship in there. So that is physically on the level. Therefore, I can put events inside that ship. What you might also remember is that we actually made the baddies in the level. We didn't put baddies on the screen, but we made the baddies using this script over here. So it is really important that we put the collisions for the baddie inside the level and not open up the baddie and try to put collisions here because it's going to mess up. Let's go back to level one. Let's put in a type and type. We are going to choose the baddie being hit by a laser. Because of course, now we want the baddie to die when it's hit by a laser. So what we're going to do is again, same routine. We kill both. Like this first actor and second actor. Now what we'll do is we'll try putting in an explosion because of course it's really good to have the explosion. It gives you the feeling that something actually happened. If something just disappears off the screen, it doesn't really make much sense. Now what's going to happen is we can't really choose an X of self or a Y of self. So let's just see what we can do. We can't really choose X of actor last created actor. So we are going to have problems here. So what we might have to do is figure out a different way of making the explosion. Now, if we look at the baddie, you can see there is a animation called hit, which is exactly the same animation as the explosion. So all characters share the exact same animation for dying, which is just that explosion. So we could use that as a way of getting the explosion onto the baddie. So let's see if we can do that because this isn't going to work. 
because we've got no way of telling the explosion where to go. So let's get rid of that. Let's first of all actually just check out if this is working. Let's make sure we're on the right tracks before we try something fancy. Okay, and it's working pretty well. So now I have the ability to kill the baddies as well as getting killed by the baddies. Now this is feeling really like a game now because I don't want to get shot, but I also have the motivation to try and kill the baddies, which is cool. So that's working. What we want is that feedback of an explosion so that we know that the baddie has died and not just disappeared. So let's see what we can do. We can very simply go into the draw and we can switch animation. So let's do it this way. Why don't we kill the second actor, switch the animation to, I think it was called hit. Let's just check very quickly. Yeah, it's called hit, all small letters. For actor, let's do first actor over there. And then of course, kill first actor. Now we're going to have a problem because we're going to kill the second actor. That's the laser. We're going to switch the animation to hit for the first actor. That's the baddie. And then immediately we're going to kill the first actor, which is the baddie. So if we just check that out, I think I know what's going to happen. I think rather than seeing an explosion of any kind, both actors are just going to disappear off the screen. So we're not really giving it a chance to explode. Yep, exactly what I thought. So once we shoot the baddie, it just disappears off the screen. So we're going to have to put in a delay of killing that actor before the animation has played. So we want the animation to play and then to kill the actor. So let's go to flow time and we'll do after and I think we could try 0 0.4 seconds so I'm a bit paranoid about how long it should be on the screen so about 0 0.4 seconds and then we'll kill the first actor let's see if that works okay let's have a look and instead I died let me try that again oh that works pretty well oh that looks really cool Let's give that a try. Yeah, I, I kind of like the way it moves. Oh, I just saw an explosion shooting a laser at me. Let's have a look. So there are going to be some glitches in here. And I don't know if you just noticed it there. So the bad or the bad guy is shooting at me even after they die. So we might have to figure that out. I'm not so worried about it now. So let's have a look. So once I shoot the baddie... Yeah, so there is a tiny bit of time delay between the baddie getting shot and it shooting at me. But at the moment, as I said, I'm not so worried about it. It's not bothering me enough to freak out or anything like that. At the moment, it's working pretty well. And I've decided I am not going to have laser and bad laser equaling or let's say cancelling each other out because I think it's cooler when they just go past each other. It makes it a bit more stressful. So we've got almost everything working. Let's have a look. That is baddie versus laser. So there we have all of our collisions working. We have all of our movements working. What we now need to do is work on the scoring system. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now to make the score, we're going to use a game attribute. Now game attributes are different to normal attributes. Game attributes are allowed to be shared amongst all the scenes all the actors and just about everything in the game. And a typical reason for making a game attribute would be something like a score. Because in a game, there might be multiple reasons why the score is changing. So you could be killing multiple bad guys. You could have multiple power-ups, multiple coins, keys, doors, you name it. So it's good to have an attribute that is allowed to be shared between all actors and all levels. It's really important that there is an attribute that does that. So what we're going to do is create a brand new game attribute. We're going to call it score, all lowercase. And we're going to make sure it's a number and its initial value obviously should be zero. And we'll do that. So what we're going to have, let's have a look. We created the score. Yep, that's good. So what we're going to do is basically make a score system only when a bad guy is shot. So when a baddie is shot by the ship, the score will increase by one. And that's it. So there's no scores coming off there's no points being lost and later on if this game becomes something bigger maybe power-ups maybe bigger baddies maybe end of you know level bosses or anything like that but at the moment 
every laser hitting a bad guy should equal one extra point, and that's it. So let's work our way into how we're going to do all of this. I think what I'll do is create a brand new when creating, and I'll set the score here like this. Let's move that to the top. And what we'll do is set the score to zero. Now, the reason why I'm doing that, although the initial value is zero, is every time this level replays, I want the score to reset back to zero. And that's the only reason I'm putting that there. Now, what we need to do is we already have a system where we're tracking when a bad guy is shot by a laser. So at that very time, we should be able to add one to the score. So we'll do it like this. We'll set the score like this to score plus one, which is a standard way of increasing something. So whatever the score is, every time a laser hits a baddie, increase the score by whatever the score is and plus one to it. And that's it. We also now have to draw, that is to print the score on the screen. We do that really easily by going to basics and when drawing, we are going to display the score. Now, I have a number of fonts in here. Now, I'm not going to go through how I got these fonts into the game itself. I might make a really short video later, but just know that you can download a font from the internet and put it into your game and have it displaying how you want it, what size, and you can affect its color and also its outline. Really easy, really not hard to do. So what I've got is actually three fonts. For this one, I'm going to use this text font. Now, this happens to be a bitmap font. Again, I'll make a video of how to do this. It's really cool and really a lot of fun, but I'm not going to go through it now. Let's just note the name of that font, which is called text font, capital T, capital F. Let's remember that. Let's go back to level one. What we're going to do is go to the drawing section there. And what we'll do is go to the styles and we will set the current font, choose the font and we'll call it text font. What we're going to actually display on the screen is this. We are going to say draw text score. Now you notice I have used capital letters. There's a really important reason for this. If you have a look at my font, it is made up of only capital letters. There are no lowercase letters in my alphabet. If I did type in score like this, only the letter S would show and the rest wouldn't because it wouldn't work out what those letters were. In this case, I just have to write the word score like this. And let's put that text at 2020. Now 2020 refers to the actual level itself, the whole screen. So if we just test this game right now and see where this word score appears, we can actually put the actual score next to it. So let's have a look. And there you go. In the top left, we can see the word score. And now every time I shoot an alien, try not to die myself. Every time I shoot an alien, I'm calling them aliens. They're just bad guys. Nothing says they're aliens. There you go. So I, I think I've shot one already. I'm not doing well in this level. Let's have a look. Shoot another one. So we should be seeing the score increasing by one every time I shoot. So how do we do that? Well, we already have the game attribute called score. We're already keeping a track of the score by adding one every time a baddie gets hit. So what we'll do is very simply add another draw text. And this time we're going to drag in the score attribute in there. And what we'll do is put it at position. Now I'm not sure where that's going to be. Let's try 120. So the same vertical position, but move it horizontally to the right. Let's have a look. If all goes well, we should see the number zero next to score. And then every time I shoot an alien, it should go up by one. Okay, you can see the zero, but it's kind of overlaid on top of the colon. So what we'll do is just shift it along by 20 pixels. Let's just test that again and make sure it's working. So if all is well, we should see the word score and a little bit of a space and then the number zero. That's way better. That looks cool. So what we'll do is shoot a couple of aliens and make sure our scoring system works. So there we are. I'm not doing too well. And I died. Okay, so I only got a score of one. I need it to at least score more than one. 
See, now that I can die, I'm getting stressed trying to shoot aliens and I'm scared of dying. So let's have a look. If I can get at least one, let's have a look. Two. Now you notice that the score jumped up by two there. So it was on two and I shot once and I think that is to do with the amount of delay that the bullets have and the amount of delay that we have for the explosion animation to come. So let's just shoot. So let's try that again and just see how many times I can shoot. Maybe we have a problem to solve. Yeah, I think we do. So I think I'm able to shoot the explosion. Yep, and get double points. So you can see that I'm getting double points. Okay, so let's see if we can fix that very quickly. The scoring system is working perfectly. So I think what's happening here is, yeah, I think it's that delay. So I think if we turn that to 0 0.3, we may be able to solve that problem. I have a feeling that the bullets are hitting the explosion and it's registering as hitting the bad guy twice. So we'll see. We still have that bad laser coming out of the explosion. We'll see if we can fix that. It's something that I don't really mind. This is one of those glitches that retro games used to have. And I think if all is well, we may well have... I just got killed by a rogue laser there. Let me just try that again. I'm also not happy with the position of the alien being right off the end of the screen. Doing really badly at the moment. Let's just see if I can get a double shot off. At the moment, I'm struggling just to stay alive. So let's have a look. Now, I think I haven't been able to shoot twice. I think that small change in the delay has actually worked. So we now have a working scoring system. So what else is there to do? Well, I think, let me just shut that down. I think... No game, especially a retro game, no game is complete without some sound. And I think without sounds, your, your game doesn't feel like a game. So let's look at the sounds we've got. I have got a number of sounds in here. We've got a baddie dying sound. We've got a bang sound. We've got an explode sound. We even have a theme tune, which we'll do later. And we have a laser sound. So let's just plug those sounds into the proper places. This is quite easy because we've done all the hard work. So let's go to the ship. Let's have a look at the events. And we've got a shooting one. So every time we shoot a laser, that's creating a laser there, I think we should play a sound. And we'd go to the sounds tab. And we'll really simply play a sound. And that sound will be laser. Like that. We will go to ship and baddie and ship and bad laser. So that's when the ship dies. We want to play a sound. So let's grab play a sound. And that sound will be, I think it was explode. That's a really big, long explosion. So I want people to feel really sad when they hear that. So it means the game is over. Let's go to the baddie, excuse me, let's go to the level where we have the baddie and the laser. Let's go to the sound and we will play the sound of Let's play the sound of Baddie Dies. I think that was the one. Okay, let's have a look. Test this game. Now, there should be sounds everywhere. I'll turn the volume up slightly so that you can hear it. Don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty cool because... Now, that explosion is pretty cool because it sounds like everything just ended. Let me just refresh that. We have a we have a pew pew sound, which I really like. It's, it's kind of comical to be shooting like that. <clears throat> We've got that very thumpy sound of a bad guy dying, which is okay. <clears throat> and then, of course, when we ourselves die... <clears throat> sounds like the end of the world might be a little bit loud but i think it's really cool it kind of reminds me of games i used to play when i was younger so that's taken care of the sounds which is really easy you'll agree so what's left to do i think we should have a starting screen and an ending screen and i think 
that will wrap up this game. So let's go to our dashboard and have a look at our scenes. I've already made a start scene and an end scene. Let's have a look at the start scene. There is nothing there. So I think for our start screen, we are going to do something really simple. Let's just add a drawing. And this will be the title. We are going to go to drawing styled. Let's set the font to title font. This is a really cool font. It's not one I made. It's one that I downloaded. Let's go to drawing and we will put the word in capitals space racer. Now, here's where we're going to have a bit of a problem because space racer is going to be quite big text. Let's just have a look at how big this is going to be. Let's put it at X 100 and Y 100. What we need to do before we go any further is actually set the start scene. And at the bottom right, you can see here, we need to mark it as the starting scene. So when we start the game now, it won't jump into level one, it will jump onto the start screen. So let's see what it actually looks like right now. And there you go. So we have Space Racer on the screen, but I'm not quite happy because it's not quite centered. So we need to do something to make it look a little bit better. Let's close that down. Let's go to our start. Let me just shut down ship and baddie. We might have to go into level one, but let's just keep that there. We want to position this in a really nice way and we want it to be in the middle. So let's see how we can do that. So we have a really cool thing which says get width for there. So in order to get our text in the center and perfectly in the center, we have to do a little bit of a mathematics. Don't worry, it's not so hard. So what we'll do is we'll ignore that X as 100. And what we'll do is grab a minus block. So we're going to do two sums. We're going to take the screen width, that's the width of the entire screen, divide it by two, and then minus the width of the text and divide that by two. And by doing that really simple calculation, your text will always be in the middle. So let me just show you how to do that rather than trying to explain it in words. So what we'll do is we are going to take a divider and we're going to take the screen width. Now to get the screen width, you go to scenes, you go to world and you put that there. So you take the scene, that's your level, width in pixels, and you divide that by two. You take another divider, you take your get width for, and what we need to do is just put the same writing in, space racer like this, and we need to divide that by two. And the Y is taken care of because we just want it at 100. Let's put that instead at 150. Let's just test this game and see if that works. And there you go. We have our text perfectly centered. I think I'm going to move it down in the Y because I think it's a bit too high. And then what we'll do is a really silly animation as well. Again, really retro. We'll just have the space racer kind of jumping in space out and in so that it looks a little bit more dynamic than it does right now. Let's change that to 250. That might be a bit low, but let's not worry about that. So what we'll do to make a silly animation on our title is really simply add an event. We're going to make this a time event and we'll do every however many seconds. We can do that every two seconds or let's do it one second just for the sake of it. And what we'll do is Actually, I'll make it two seconds because I realize what I'm about to do. And what we'll do is we'll grab the drawing and spacing. We're going to need two of them because I just want the text to kind of look like it's moving in some way. Don't want it to be too fancy because, again, this is a retro game. And we need a do after block as well. So what we're going to do is this. It's going to work something like this. Every two seconds we are going to have an animation where the spacing is moved from 15. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I, I've, I've got to say that looks better than I thought it would. Okay, so we have our title on the screen. Brilliant. I'm not going to touch that. What we can also do is in the starting screen, let's also run the theme music. So let's grab a when created 
and let's go to sounds and we are going to play the sound which is the theme like that now i've noticed i haven't named any of these that's really bad so this is play the theme let's do that i think i've been going lowercase for everything so let's just stay consistent there drawing so this is title on screen and this is animate title and there we go so we have our title there but of course now we're stuck on the first screen so we're stuck on the start screen we need to get from the first screen onto the second screen so what do we need to do let's make a, a key in the old days you had to press a key on your keyboard to jump into the game so we can do that really simply by adding a input and a keyboard so we'll do this when control and the letter s i made a control with the letter s like that when s is pressed what we want to do is change from this scene to the actual game so let's go here game flow we are going to i think we'll just switch scene like this we will switch to scene level one i don't want to crossfade i am going to slide up that's really old school i love those transitions so here we go we're going to play the screen we're going to play the title on the screen i noticed that this is red i think that's just from the mistake i made before let me close this down open it up again and i think the red will have gone unless i've done something really bad no that should be okay so we're playing the theme music s will get us from the start screen to level one the title is displayed on the screen and we are animating it oh i tell you what i've forgotten we haven't told the actual player how to get from the title screen to the actual game so let's really quickly do that let's go to you know what i'm going to do i'm going to be naughty i am just going to copy this entire block here and what we'll do is add another drawing like this I'm going to paste it in. i'm doing that with a right click and let's just set the font this time to text font we are going to say in capital letters press s to start and because we've already got that we simply have to replace the writing there like that of course we have to change the position it's at so if 250 was where the title is let's do 350 for the text let's just test this out now i've gone a bit fast don't worry you can rewind and watch it again and in future videos we're going to talk much more about text on the screen but let's have a look oh, and you can hear my theme music that's really cool let me just turn the volume down that might be a bit overpowering and let's press s oh isn't that cool isn't that cool so here we go we're playing the game now i noticed that the theme's playing now i've got no problem with the theme playing but that wasn't my original idea so i'm going to close this down and what i need to do is when level one starts we've already set the score to zero why don't we also switch off the music because in my opinion i don't want the music to be playing so i think we're going to have problems here because there's no real way of switching off music we can use the stop all sounds block but that will literally stop all sounds no explosions no pew pews nothing like that so i think what we're going to have to do is just modify our play theme and what we'll do is instead use a slightly different block which is going to be if i can find it this one over here we're going to play on a channel so we're going to play the sound which is the theme tune and we'll put that on channel one and then what we'll do in our level one is when the level is created so that's when you start playing we are going to stop sound on channel one so that should actually take care of the theme tune let's just see if that works okay so there's the theme music playing let's press s and there you go we stop i kind of think that's cool because it's reminding me of the way games used to play when i was younger mm -hmm. so we've still got the sounds playing although the theme has stopped playing i think that's really cool now what we need to do is figure out a way of when our ship dies we need to go to the ending screen so let's very quickly go to the ending screen 
we have nothing there. So what we need to do is print on the screen something like you lose and then also what score you got. So we'll do that with a drawing event like this. And what we'll do is we'll just call this end message like this. So we'll do it the same as before, where we're just going to use the screen width and the width of the text. So why not just go to the start where we've already got the title on the screen and we'll just copy that. Let's just save ourselves a bit of work and we'll paste that in. Now let's make sure we've got the correct font. So let's choose this time. We'll choose the game font and see if that works. We obviously don't want to type in space racer. So we're going to type in the text all caps, you lose two exclamation marks. And we'll replace that text there with you lose exclamation marks. Now that should set the you lose text in the middle. So that's at the end screen. And then we also want to put the score that you got in the game in there as well. So let's just duplicate that block there. And we're going to put in all caps, you scored. Now I think I've just realized uh, something silly we did in our level. When we displayed the score, we kind of did this draw the text, which was just the word score and then print the score underneath it. I think while sitting, I've just figured out a, a cooler way of doing it. Let's see if that works. And I think for this one, I need numbers and text. Let's grab the text one and let's see if we can do an and. I'm just going to see if there's anything that can help me out here. It's definitely in the text. Let's have a look. Yep, that's the one I wanted, text and text. I think that's where we went wrong before. Let's see if it works now, and then we'll replace it there as well. This, this will be a lot easier. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the fact that we had to print two different texts, those two different lines, even though they were in the same line on the screen. And I was trying to find a better way of doing that. So let's see if we can do that. So if we say you scored colon space, and then we will throw our game attribute of score in there. And let's see if that works. And we'll put that there. Now that might mess up the text there, but let's have a look. It's worth trying it out and just seeing if it works. You know, while we're doing this, let's see if we can do that here where the score is displayed. So I'm going to take these two blocks out here and I'm going to put in an and which was in the numbers and text in the text. And that was the lost my place here, the text and text. Let's see if that works. So score equals, so that is score colon space. And we'll put the game attribute there. Let's just test that out because I'll be really happy if that works because I've just kind of thought of how to do that just sitting here, which is cool. Let's have a look. Theme music, let's turn it down a bit and let's have a look. Does that actually work? Actually works really well. Look at that. So the score is, yeah, so, okay. So that is a much nicer way of doing the score rather than doing three or four lines of text. You just have to do one simple line of text. So that should also work in the end screen. So we'll say you scored and we'll put the score there. Making sure guys, you put a space here. Otherwise the score will be right up against the colon and it will look kind of crowded. We're still doing the screen width and the get width for, and that, we'll see if that works. Maybe we just have to add another space here for the score and that will take care of it. Uh, the Y is 250, obviously not. It should be 350. Let's put it underneath. Oh, and I've realized guys that we can't actually get to the ending screen because, well, the ship has to die for the ending screen to come. So although we've made this really cool thing here, we haven't really made a way for it to get to the ending screen. So we're going to have to do that, obviously. We will do that in our level because we want level one to do all the detecting. If we go to the events, we actually have an actor uh, section. And what we're going to do is we're literally going to check if an actor dies. We'll do an actor of type because I kind of like that. If the actor type ship is ever killed, 
I think we can do it like that. So whenever the ship dies, remember the, the game is only over when the ship dies. And the ship dies when it's hit either by a bad laser or a bad E. So when the ship dies, what we want to do is go to the ending screen. So we'll do scenes, game flow, and we'll say switch to scene end. That's that one there. And we'll do a, should we do a really sad two second fade out and fade in like that? Let's check it out, guys. So if our ending screen is okay, that is we've got the you lose and then the you scored and whatever score you got. Let's see if that works. Now I'll make sure that I try to at least score one before I die, because otherwise that's kind of embarrassing. There you go. Three and four. There you go. Now let's... And there we have the fade out. We have the fade in. Now I really don't like that font. I, I must say, I downloaded this font and I find it particularly ugly. So what we'll do really quickly. We'll just change the game font. I think I prefer the text font myself. Uh, we'll just do a really quick test again. And that happens a lot when you're doing things like games. Something that looks good on the screen in one place really doesn't look good when you actually come to look at it in your game. So there's nothing lost there. So let's just... I should actually score when I want to see if that works. So now I've realized this game is a lot harder to play. There you go, I've scored at least one. Let's go out fighting now. And there we go. Fade out, fade in. Oh, that looks so much better, doesn't it? That looks great. Now what we can do is either have a key that you press to go back to the starting screen, but I don't think that's what we need here. I think what we need is a time delay. Uh, and also I think the gap here is a little bit too large. So what we'll do, is instead of making that 350, I'll make that 300. And then what we'll do is put a time delay. So we'll put a flow and time. And we'll do after, I don't know what's a reasonable time, three seconds, I suppose. We will switch our scene to the starting scene. That's start. And we'll do that two second, two second. Now, I apologize if you can hear a vacuum cleaner noise in the background. That's actually my laptop overheating. So I'm not sure what's going on. I think I've been at it for so long. My, my laptop's literally begging me to close it and let it rest for a little while. But we're almost done. So what we have here is when the ship is killed, we took care of that in level one. Whenever the ship is killed, we're going to fade to the end screen. The end screen's going to print you lose and then what your score is. And then after three seconds, we're going to do the fade out and fade in back to the start screen. And remember the start screen, you have to press S to start the game. So you won't just find yourself suddenly in the middle of the game again. Let's have a look. So here's our game. We press S to start. Let's have a go. My goodness, this is a lot harder than it looks. Okay, so we'll take one. And we will sacrifice ourselves. Terrible. Fade out. You lose. You score two. I think that looks great. And then it fades back to the start screen with the animation of our space racer and waiting for S to start. And so there we have it, guys. We have a complete game, all with a starting screen, the actual level that works, and an end. There are some things in this game that I'm not quite happy with. For example, the baddie, I think we should actually make the limits of the left and right much less. So it should be 20 pixels in on the left and 20 pixels in on the right. Uh, some of the timing I would like to work on later between the one and the three seconds. So there's little bits of the game that I don't like. But overall, if we have just one last look at it, I think this is a really good effort for, well, however long I've been talking for. So I apologize if you found the video too long, but it's kind of cool to see a game being made from start to finish and not in little bits, I think. Well, actually, if you disagree with that, put it in the comments and I will chop this tutorial up into pieces and put it as separate videos. But anyway, let's go for this game now. I'm playing for real now. 
So I'm going to try not to die embarrassingly quickly. So far scored zero. Let's do this. At least score one for the glory of this channel. Let's have a look. Oh, and there you go. Scored five. I lost. I scored five. And then I'm back to the starting screen. I think that works really well. So hope you enjoyed this extremely long video. I hope it gives you ideas for your own games. And if you've got requests for future games that I could make or future styles of games, I will try to do more of these videos where I make a whole game in one sitting. As I said, hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you here next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Think about clicking that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up and maybe think about hitting the bell notifications if you want to be notified every time a new video comes up.